Thank you for joining us for All Things Real Estate. Now here are your hosts, Brad Avergon and Gary Kelly. Hi, this is Gary Kelly and welcome to All Things Real Estate. I am with Castanetti Realty Group and I am joined today by... Brad Avergon with Fairway Independent Mortgage. Still independent? Still in every day. I'm going to stay independent. I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> We all work in organizations where at one point or another they get sold out, at least I have, and it's always like this big shock. And the truth is, it's money. <laughs> People decide that they, they either can't move the organization forward or um, they're tired, whatever, and then they sell. And the, the rest of us are left in the, in the lurch. I remember one time I worked at a company that was a large company, local, and um, there was a merger with another company, I'm not gonna go into who it was, and I remember that night, the president of the, the, the original company that I worked in, kinda came out and said, I hope people don't think I sold out. And the truth is, there wasn't a person in the room that didn't think he had sold out. Just no, we, haven't, we actually, just for clarification, Gary, we haven't been sold. We're still held by the same principle. Nothing's going on there. So, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I like to play on the fairway independent mortgage. I know you do. I know okay. you do. Okay. Uh, so, the last time we got together, we spent a lot of time talking about, um, specifically about staging homes. Right. And my, my friend, the loan officer, didn't have much air in that episode. Uh, although you talked about your own experiences and all that, I appreciate that. But I wanted to make sure this time we were able to spend some time talking more financial stuff to give you some air time. So in my hand, yes, I have a list of 10 reasons why it makes sense to buy a home now even with elevated interest rates. That's the Johnny Carson Karnak. There are some viewers that will actually remember that, and some viewers are saying, what has he done now? I guess that makes me Ed McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Camel Breath, why don't we get started? <laughs> so, Brad, what are some of the reasons that it makes good sense to buy a house now? Well, first of all, I think that, you know, right now it's, <laughs> even though it's, can I, can I put the date in? I'm going to put the date in. It's March 1st. So, uh, well, still, yeah, they, don't, oh. they don't like us to put a date in. And I think it's important to put a date in, to let it leak out. And, you know, the radio station doesn't like it because they run these a couple of Fridays from now. I know. I know. The videos run different times. But I think a lot of what we talk about is, there's a context around what's going on in the world sure. and the dates and all that. Sure. So, so today is March 1st. Um, it's, it's cold out. I went outside this morning. It's cold. Um, there's still, um, I, I don't think the, 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 the first time home buyers have flocked to the market quite yet. The, 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 the tulips haven't popped, you know, and, and everybody's in love and going out buying homes. So I think it's a good opportunity right now where there's a fewer buyers out there to be able to to, to be able to go out and, and make a bid on a property when you start bidding against hundreds of buyers and they are starting to come out i can see definitely an, an, an influx of a pre approval starting but when you have to compete against all these buyers it drives the price up it absolutely right. drives the price up and so some also sometimes when interest rates are they're a little bit higher than they were a year ago let's say and that also keeps buyers out of the marketplace. So if rates drop, more buyers come in. So now's a good time. I would tell you that Sue and I, we tend to do more listings than buying. And it's it's not, you know, it's called 60-40 split, 70-30, whatever. It's that kind of a mix. I would tell you that in the last week, maybe it's because we just got close to that March 1st date, uh, our phones have started to ring a lot with people saying, okay, I want to sell my house. Right. And we're getting into the, I want to sell my house before the, the school year starts. Right. Um, and so to a degree, that means we're putting the house in the market pretty quickly. So yeah. it, it's a good time. 
And I share that not to boast about what sellers are doing, but to say that uh, buyers need to understand that while there may not be as much competition now um, for houses, there's going to be because there's going to be a lot more houses coming on the market. People are going to come back in. Absolutely. And I'm definitely seeing an uptick in pre-approvals right now within the last couple of weeks. You know, it's one thing to get through the holidays and people kind of dust off, you know, their 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 uh, their holiday blues, so to speak, after in January and like kind of regroup. But come February, people start thinking spring is going to come and then come March 1st, spring is coming in full force. And so I definitely have seen an uptick of people getting ready. So now is a good time to try to get in before we hit the really warm weather. Uh, that's my recommendation anyway. So you would also advocate the sooner they hop in, the more time they're going to have. Absolutely. So in the case of real estate, time that you own it is your friend, right? You know, the longer you own a property, two things happen. The more it appreciates, right? Real estate has not gone down. We may have seen and, and not, I am not even going to say this because in our area, even during the mortgage meltdown, the real estate crisis, whatever you want to call it, we dipped for maybe a year or two. And that was a major crisis, right? That was major. Other than that, we've seen real estate go up year after year after year. So the earlier you get in the game, even if it's not your end all house, even if it's a, a starter condo or a starter home, the earlier you get in the game, the more that property is going to go up in value, the more that value ends up in your pocket. So that I am, very, I am, very important. I am going to comment on that because that's where location, location, location starts to uh, come out. You know, I think, and you know, someone's going to go and pull back charts, and I'm going to be wrong. I, I'm just going to acknowledge that now. But I think Westboro came back to pre-crisis levels in about three years. Yeah, that's about I know right. in Marlboro it took about ten years. Okay, but it comes back. So you have to be patient with it. But uh, it's absolutely the long game. And that's what I was going to just say, Gary. Listen, if somebody's here and they're like, look, and I'm here for two years, you know, do you really need, I mean, if you want to buy real estate, that's great. And maybe you'll, you'll get it right. But could, you know, at some point, could you see a dip? Yeah, you could. Real estate is a long game. So you want to be there five to seven years. And if you can be there five to seven years, I think you're going to definitely see some appreciation. All right. And how about, you know, whose mortgage do they want to pay? Well, that's the, that's always the big one. I always like to say that as well. So listen, you're always, unless you're living in mom and dad's basement, which doesn't seem to be the preference. I know it wasn't with my kids anyway. Um, although the cooking was pretty good. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, if you, unless you want to live in mom and dad's basement, people do not want to live at home. They want to live on their own. They want to live in, and so you're paying somebody's mortgage. If you're renting an apartment, you're paying, or a condominium, or a home, you're paying your landlord's mortgage. You're paying their mortgage down, right? Every month you make a payment to that landlord, they pay their mortgage, they increase the equity they have in their property, which increases their profit. So you're paying somebody's mortgage. You're better off paying your own mortgage, right? You're better off increasing your own equity, increasing your own profit, increasing your own savings. So the sooner you can start on that, the better off you are. Now, that's not to say if you're temporarily located in an area for a year, no. You don't need to do that. But if, you, if you're going to be in this and you want to build equity, pay your own mortgage. Don't pay somebody else's. I, I was reading an article this morning in some publication that talked about what do you have to do to get your son out of the house? And the article basically said, you know, for many years, you'd get out of school and you'd never go back home. Now people are going back home and it's pretty comfortable. You do have good food and meals and things often paid for and that kind of stuff. And so the article's premise was you, you got to do something to get these kids to move on. Um, it wasn't quite that harsh, uh, but it, you know, it, it goes along those lines. I know that in the case of my kids out of school, they, um, they got a different place to live. And then they did come home at that point and then quickly said, yeah, I'm going to move on. Um, Sue's kids seem to have gone directly from school to, you know, out in apartments. So uh, I give them credit. But, you know, you see there are people where, you know, we go in and the son's been living in the basement for 30 years. Yeah. Right. And when the son's living in the basement for 30 years, I got to be honest, he's not going to move. He's yeah, not inclined to move. Why would he? 
It, home is a good landing pad after school for maybe, you know, three to six months, but then that you really want to get out on their own. Because, you know, it's, it's not only a, it's a social aspect of it, too. There's a learning aspect of it. Being independent is really good for, for, uh, for you know, a, a child, right? That's what we want as parents. We want our kids to be able to fly on their own, right? That's what you want, you know. And so while it's, while it's nice sometimes to have your kids at home, better to have them come visit you uh, than to, to live in the basement for you know, until they're 40 <laughs> in general. So Brad, if someone wants to reach you to talk about living in the basement until they're 40, how would they do that? <laughs> Best way to reach me, Gary, is via my cell phone, which is 978-375-5531. Or they can reach me uh, via email at brad at bradavergon.com. And Gary, how do they reach you? I can be reached at gary at movewithgary.com or 508-733-6005. So, Brad, we're going to come back. Uh, we'll continue the show from your basement. <laughs> I've been living here 40 years, Gary. Exactly. I'll be on the flip side. <laughs> Stay tuned. More All Things Real Estate coming right up. <laughs> 